friends, Pastor Buddy Chapman. Thanks for tuning in to our little satellite setup here. Hope you guys are staying warm and just watching the snow fall, but your hearts are going to be warmed up by the Word of God. Let us pray. Father, I thank you so much today for opportunity. The great thing about the gospel is we can share it anywhere, any way. And Father, today we share it right from our homes into the hearts of the folks that will be listening. I thank you for the privilege. I thank you for healing to our bodies. I thank you for the opportunity to share. And I pray that many people be blessed as uh, uh, just the outpouring of love comes forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to ask you guys to help me out. I'm kind of doing the one-man band here. And I'm going to tell you, I miss everybody, that's for sure. And I was hoping to see if this thing's going to come up. Hey, I can see what's going on. Maybe I can watch Watch some of the, the thumbs up and stuff like that. But we're going to make it work so you guys uh, help me out where you can. Root me on, root me on, and we're going to be pointing to Jesus. So with that being said, thanks, everybody. Be sure to share the message, like the message, comment along the way. Let's have some interaction, and let's go ahead and go into the Word of God. Now, last night I shared a little bit about the message, so we're going to be primarily in Mark chapter 2. So if you got a chance, get your Bibles. Go to Mark chapter 2. going to kind of unpack those first 12 yeah, probably about the first 12 verses in there. But uh, I want to share today about what God's been doing and laying on my heart. God shows me that, you know, even as we've read the Bible and we go back through the stories of the Bible, there's always more. That's what I see in my life. There's always more that God wants to, to, to show us and entrust to us and, and keep us moving. And so as I went back through this familiar story this week, the Lord just opened up the scriptures even deeper. And I pray that there's something in here for you today that will encourage you. So many of you heard the story about Jesus uh, being back in Capernaum. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of, if you got your Bibles, I'm going to walk, talk, preach, and teach right through it. So what's really happening is, is this. Jesus is back at Capernaum. He's been away for a little while. He's been there earlier on doing what he always does, preaching and teaching the gospel, healing folks. If you go back to chapter 1, you can see where he was over in Galilee doing the same thing, casting out demons, preaching the word. So he comes back home for a little break in the action. But you know what? Jesus is always about the Father's business. How much more should we be about the Father's business, right? As we follow in the footsteps of Jesus. So he gets back to Capernaum, right? And this is what starts to happen. So many people start gathering around and pushing into the house where he's staying. There's no more room. I mean, they can't even get past the doorways. They can't even get in because they are hungry for the word of God. Wouldn't that be amazing now? You, you would think with all the stuff going on in the world that, that we'd be hungry for the word of God. Now, I know many people are, but many don't even seem like it's on, on their radar. I pray that today this message will just... Cultivate something in your heart to just cry out to Jesus, just draw to him. Let's get back to the story. They press into the house. People everywhere. But there's a, there's a person, there's a, a, a paralyzed man that has four good friends. Let me just stop right there. How many people have some really good friends? If you've got one or two good friends, you are blessed, let me tell you. But a lot of times when situations come up, you really see who your friends are. I pray today that we're encouraged to be the friend that we see here today. So he's got four good friends, and they hear about Jesus. And no doubt they said, There's, this, this is bigger than us, but you know what? I believe if we can carry our friend to Jesus, Jesus can bring healing in his body. So what do they do? They put him on this little mat, they get ready to go, and all four of them carry him. They get to the place where Jesus is at again. They can't get in. They can't, they can't get around this way, can't get around that way. But they're so dedicated and they're so sure, they're so built up in their faith. Somebody says, we'll take him in through the roof. Now, houses were built a lot different than they are now, of course. But, but what I understand is sometimes on some of those homes... They had a stairway going up the side or maybe in the back. Who knows, maybe they had a ladder. That did not deter them. They were going to take their friend and get him before the Lord. So the Bible talks about how they, they, they move in and they, they get him up on the roof and they begin to, to tear parts of the roof apart so they can take their friend, check this out, and lower his paralyzed body down in the middle of this prayer meeting. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being at a prayer meeting? All of a sudden, man, it's so packed that somebody's like coming in through the vent and they're bringing this paralyzed guy in and say, Lord, we know that you can do it. 
I think today is what we really need to see in our own hearts. Do we realize that God can do it? Even when we can't see a way in, no, we can see a way out with Jesus. So they go ahead and they bring him in. I want you to check this out. When we get down around about verse 5, if you take a look at it, don't miss the gravity of this statement. See in their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. I want to let that soak in for just a minute. Son, your, friend, your sins are forgiven. And immediately what happens? <laughs> but some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts. Why does he speak like this? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sin but God alone? He's getting ready to show them. He's getting ready to tell them, say, hey, let me tell you something right here. I'm getting ready to show you what the deal is. He goes on, check this out, about verse 8. It says, right away, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were thinking like this within themselves and said to them, why are you thinking these things in your heart? Let's stop right there. Jesus knows our thoughts. He knows what's going on. Nothing is keeping Jesus or catching Jesus by surprise. In your current situation, I want you to be encouraged. There's nothing, nothing, not a thing that is surprising God. Not a pandemic, not your job, not your family, not any of those things right there. So be encouraged. So look at this. Verse 9, he comes and he says, which is easier to say to, to the paralyzed man, right? Your sins are forgiven or to say get up and take your mat and walk. So look at this. But so, so as they're looking at this, they're saying, who, is, who do they think they are? See, the Pharisees and the, and the religious folks, you hear what I'm saying? The religious folks start looking around and they say, well, who does he think he is? Well, you've been following him. <laughs> Surely you've been hearing his teaching. But Jesus uses this platform for a teachable moment. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm, I'm going to just kind of framework everything here. And so what he does, he says, hey, why are you thinking like this? And they said, it, what their hearts are saying, hey, man, he's saying that he can forgive sin. Only God can forgive sin. Guess what? They're looking right at God with flesh, right? And he goes on and he tells them, he says, what's easier to do, forgive sin or tell the man get up and walk? And then he says, okay, look, this is what we're going to do. Your sins are forgiven. Now get up and take your mat and walk. And the man does. Now let me tell you what. Verse 12 says, immediately he got up with his mat in front of everyone and walked away. This is what they were saying. They were astonished by, the, by what was happening, man. All the glory went to God. See, that's how it's supposed to be. Not about us, not about me, not about anybody else, but lifting up the name of the Lord, giving God his full praise and perfect place in our lives, in our community, in everything we do. Look at this last line here. It says, we have never seen anything like this. Somebody say, amen, give us a thumbs up. I'm praying that y'all are excited about this. You know, I, I, somebody wrote me a text today as they were praying for me. And they said, look, <laughs> regardless of where you speak, regardless of where you are, regardless of what's going on, this is what you are created to do. You preach from your living room. You preach from your job. You preach from wherever. And I'm going to tell you that goes the same with you. Be encouraged, man. Don't let a few snowdrops, a couple of reports or anything like that cool your heart down. Let it heat your heart up when you read the word of God because I am ready to crank this thing up. Somebody say amen. Let's do it. Here we go. So the first thing, if you want to take some notes, we're going to go into this here. My first point on here is going to be who's got your back? You know, we were talking about those friends. I, I, I often say this. How many people have got some of those 2 a.m. friends? And what I mean by that, that you could call them any hour of the night, 2 a.m., and say, I got a problem. I need you. I got a flat tire. I need some milk for my baby, whatever the case is. I need you to pray. I pray that we are the folks that will answer and say, hey, I got you. I got you. But look at this. As we start going through the situation, I'm going to go back to verse 3, all right? And they came to him, bringing the paralytic man, carried by the four of them. Now, I kind of frameworked everything out there, and now I want to go back and talk a little bit about that. Have you ever been in a situation, maybe, that you just couldn't stand for a season? Maybe it was bigger than you. I'm going to tell you what. Life is bigger than us many times, all right? But nothing is too big for God. So as we go through this thing here, sometimes, I know in my life, it's great when you have some, some really good relationships where people can stand in the gap with you. 
I know when I went through things with my mother, one of the, the toughest things was there. I had people standing in the gap. I've had surgeries on my knees and my arms and different things like that. Hey, head on collisions. I had people stand with me when I couldn't stand. Yesterday, as I was going through and talking to some of my friends, I had a buddy of mine call me. He said, I'm just checking on you. He said, what are you going to preach on? I said, man. I'm all over the board. I just want to hear what God has to say. Now, let me tell you this. Sometimes God will speak through your friend when you got too much volume of the world going on. And he said, brother, I'm going to tell you what. With all we've been seeing, we ought to, you ought to go ahead and preach on miracles. <laughs> Jeff, I appreciate that. And as I start digging in this, God was showing me. See, Jeff knows something about miracles. My friend knows something about miracles because he's been through a few things. And as you all know, as we continue to pray for his daughter, Devin, you know what? We are seeing the miraculous power of God. She went to sleep and woke up and could not walk. Now she's getting up and moving around through the power of the name of Jesus, and we are grateful. Let me tell you, they've got a page. I want you guys to check that out if you get a chance. It's called Stand for Devon. Hey, we're standing with Devon. The community's coming together with Devon. We're coming together under one umbrella, the name of Jesus, amen, and we're lifting that young lady up, and God is doing a mighty work. Who's got your back? But let me tell you, you don't have to have something catastrophic to happen, to know that God has put people in your life to have you back. Ultimately, I want you all to hear this. Ultimately, it's about keeping our eyes on the Lord. But all through the Bible, you'll see that the, the, the believers sometimes get a little tired. They get a war down. What about Moses? When they were battling, he would hold his hands up. And every time his hands would fall, their side would start to lose. So God brought two people alongside of him to help him hold his hand up. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm thankful for those that come alongside and hold me up, hold me accountable, and hold me along the way when sometimes you're just like, whoa, man, what's happening? You know what? Who's got your back? Ultimately, the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm going to tell you what, God will use the relationship that he has cultivated in you and around you to hold you up. That's what we're seeing in this story. Let's jump back in. Just wanted to share my heart with a few things and, and what's going on. Because this is what I believe about ministry. We preach and teach the word of God. We stand on the word of God. We, we, we know that this is true. But then sometimes it, it really helps when we turn around and say, hey, this is the practical application in my life. This is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm seeing in my community. This is what I'm seeing in my life. This is where I, I, I'm weak at. This is where I see God carrying me through. Are you willing to share that? Because I'm going to tell you what, when you do, God gets the glory. You're going to see it in this story. God showed me some new things in an old story. Isn't that the way he works all the time? He's always cultivating a newness in us. So we go back and we look at this, and they, and, and they bring him on in, and Jesus forgives his sin first. And that starts everything in a different tone. See, everybody that was sitting with him earlier is like, yeah, this is cool. See, a lot of people just show up for the miracle, and they miss the message. But see, what was happening here, Jesus was, was, was telling them and showing them the message. The gospel message is that we are in a sinful state. And what's more important than our physical state is that our sinful state needs to be dealt with. And it's dealt with through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody got to hit a thumbs up and a heart on that. Through the death, burial, and resurrection. Because when we put our faith and trust in that finished work right there, when we ask the Lord to come into our life and forgive us of our sin, let me tell you, things start to change in our life. What happens is we pass from death to life because we are forgiven. But sometimes... It might take somebody inviting you to church. Hey, they might not have to carry you uh, with, with a mat, but you know what? They might have to put you in a Holy Ghost headlock and love you to the, to the, to the place. But I'm going to tell you what. Hey, I'm just having a little fun as we're going along. Never underestimate the power of your witness. Look at the power of the witness for these guys here. They move on a little bit, and, and we start to see here, I want to share this. The man was carried when he couldn't stand himself. There's been times, like I said earlier, and maybe you could just think back in your mind's eye, a time when you just couldn't stand, whether it was physically, emotionally, financially, whatever it was. But God opened up the heavens just like those men opened up the, the, the top of that roof. And he got you in the presence of God and things started to change. And it started with a faithful friend. It started with some prayer time. It started with the gospel and ended up with some salvation. Amen. 
as we move along, I want you to hear this. They didn't let the crowd sway them from the mission. I want you to think about that. They did not let the crowd sway them from the mission. So often, I hear this. Man, it was just so hot, I couldn't, do, I couldn't make it to church. Oh, man, it was just so much going on, I, I didn't have time to pray today. Uh, man, it was just, they, you could fill in the blank. See, a lot of times, we allow the crowd to sway us from the mission. Don't let anybody, don't let anybody sway you from the mission that God's put on your heart. To share that gospel message, to live it out. To be a, a mirror of Christ where you can. Hey, let me tell you, if you do all you can, <laughs> God will give you all you need. So let me tell you right now, it's about moving forward. Have you ever had that situation? You said, well, man, you know, the, the line's too long. I bet you this fellow right here was glad that his friends didn't say, well, it's just too long a line. Maybe we'll come back next time. Maybe, maybe it wasn't your turn. Maybe it wasn't your time. Let me tell you what. I'm here to tell you right now. It's our time as the church to stand. It's our time as the church to move forward. It's our time as the church to lock arms and say, we will not be moved by the things of the world, but we will stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? So don't let that slow you down. Don't let the, what we see in the natural rob you from God's blessing in the supernatural. We also see this. Faith is more than talking about it. It's about being about it. I think that's been a theme of everything I've been preaching in the last little bit. These guys had to go up and tear apart the roof. They had to get sweaty. They had to get involved. You know something else the Lord was showing me? If, if you're carrying somebody on this, on this gurney or mat, however they had it here, I kind of just picture it like a, like a gurney. And it was four of them. There was one for every side. What that tells me is everybody had to be on the same sheet. Everybody had to turn around and keep walking and moving and, 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 and moving forward and, and going with this because if not, it gets out of kilter. You say, oh, okay, that makes sense. How much more in the body of Christ? When, when you're not participating, when you're not doing your part, when you're not going and giving and doing, how much more does that... That threw the body of Christ off. You see what I'm saying here? Everybody is needed. Everybody has a piece of the puzzle. Are you willing to be faithful with your piece? As I, as I continue to look at this, and, I, and I, I think about all that God shows us from such, just, just a, what is it, 12 verses. He shows us so much about ourself. Hey, would I be one of those four guys? Would I be one of those guys that would hold my, my own? Hey, would I, be, would, would I be the one standing in the gap? Or would I have been the one blocking the door? Think about this. It just came to me. There's a lot of people blocking the door. Hey, why didn't the people get out of the way? <laughs> just thought about it. Hey, why wouldn't they get out of the way and say, hey, look, this man has a need. Let's bring him in. Never really thought about that. See, because sometimes people just sitting on the sidelines of life and what happens is they're blocking your blessing. But don't be afraid. Don't turn around and go back home. If you got to crawl in the window, you got to get on top of the, the roof. If you got to stand on your knees, if you got to keep on rolling and, 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 and getting before the Lord, let's do it. But I'm going to tell you what. It's great to have other people coming alongside you. Somebody give us a thumbs up. Let's keep on rolling. Well, the next thing I start to see is this, that we need faith in action. All right. So if you go to verse five, I don't want you to miss the, the magnitude of this right here. You see, in their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. I know I'm going back through this. What I like to do is kind of lay the story out and then come back and show you what the Lord has been, been kind of teaching me. So he says, look at this. He says, he goes back and he says, look, man, your sins are forgiven. Now, we can read through that. We've heard that many times. But what I found out this week as I studied, this was a catalyst for the heart of God to be moved. He saw the faith of the friends. It wasn't even about the man's faith. It was about his friend's faith. See, if you're running low on faith, you just jump on over on their faith till you can get your own built up, okay? 
Keep on going. Now, it's a personal relationship, and it is personal when you call on the name of Jesus. But sometimes God will use people to, to walk you into his presence. Come on now. That God will walk you into his, allow those friends to walk you into his presence. Let me tell you something else. The world, I want you to hear this. The world sometimes will walk you away from his presence. Everybody says that they're your friend might not be your friend. If you're a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You got to choose the circle that you hang out with really careful. I'm not saying you don't love other folks. I'm not saying you're better than them. But I'm going to tell you this. You need to be very careful who you deal with and who you follow. That's why we got to keep our Bibles open, our hearts open, and our mouths speaking the Word of God. So as we go in, Jesus makes this profound statement. He says, your sins are forgiven. I just spoke about it a minute ago. And everything kind of, it's almost like the record, man. I can just imagine, you know, you see the old movies and the jukebox playing. And somebody comes in and something happens and it goes. Err. See, they were cool with Jesus. As long as he was doing what they wanted, right? Isn't that the way it is with most anything? The world don't mind you talking about God. But when you talk about Jesus, whew, see, that's the deal. See, there's a lot of gods that people talk about with the little g. That's not who we, that's not who we represent. We talk about the one true God. We're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. We're talking about Holy Spirit working in us and through us and in this land, all right? So let's keep on rolling with this. I've got a couple of more things I want to share with you. And it says, but some of the scribes were sitting there and they start questioning things in their hearts, right? How often does that happen? They're getting ready to see this miracle take place and they start building roadblocks. Sometimes we build a roadblock right here. Well, well, well maybe it was just fill in the blank, A, B, and C. Hey, you know what? You didn't get the job, and then all of a sudden another job came up. Oh, well, maybe, um, you know what, because I'm so good about it. No, no, look. Give praise and give thanks where it is due. And I'm going to tell you what, right now, I'm giving praise to God for giving me an opportunity today to share this message. So we keep on rolling, and we see the naysayers. I'm clicking on down to about verse 8 now. Look at this. And right away, Jesus knew what they were thinking. Nothing again is keeping God by surprise. Nothing's taking him by surprise. I want you to look at this, that, that what happened from those four men coming in there, it, it became a platform that moved the heart of God, that, that Jesus took it, made it a platform, hear me, for him to show them his authority. Check that out. If you were to turn around, right, and said, Okay, hey, uh, you're healed, get up and go, right? Would they have saw the authority of him to forgive sin? See, the Lord knows the big picture. Now, I'm going I'm to try to correlate this to what we might be going through right now. You might be in a situation that you just want the pain to stop, and I, and I feel for you, my friends. I understand that. We just want to get off this ride, so to speak, and say, hey, look, this, this something's got to change. But God allows that maybe for momentarily a few more minutes while he's turning around and setting things into motion so people see the bigger picture of God. Could it be in our country that that's happening now? Maybe. Could it be in your current situation that's happening? Possibly. Could it be that, you know, we, we just want it our way and not really considering that God's got the bird's eye view? Hey, most of the time that's it. But I'm going to tell you what, faith and action together will move the heart of God. But you are not going to hogtie God, okay? God's going to do it the way he sees fit for the best of everybody. Because everything's going to be coming at us through love, even though we don't understand it. Many times this side of heaven. But what I want to tell you is this, God is moving and God is in control and God is in, on the throne and we don't have to worry. If there's anything you can take away from this, you don't have to worry. You don't have to doubt. You just have to trust. He calls us to trust him. And so as we go back to the story, the, the four folks were, were trusting God. The man was in for the ride of his life. He was coming down and getting in the presence of God. Let me tell you what. 
That would change a lot of our lives if we just took some time and got in the presence of God. If we would take the time to study the scripture. If we would take the time to praise him. If we would take the time to worship him. If we would take the time to, to seek after his face. See, what happens is, many times we just seek after his hand. What can I get? What are you doing for me lately? See, as we look at this here, we see right now, that's what many of the folks were doing. He had a crowd. He was, he was touching lives in the natural. But Jesus wanted to do the supernatural. And through this story, we see that that's exactly what he started doing. I talked about a platform. What platform are you giving God in your life? What platform are you giving God the opportunity for you to get out of the way and say it's all yours? I pray that every time that we push a button on here to record, that this is a platform that God is glorified, that Jesus Christ's name is lifted on high, that Holy Spirit is loosed, right, into the hearts of men and women and children so that they can hear and draw close to the Word of God, take action by faith on what God is showing us here. Hey, the catalyst today is God never changes. Let me tell you that right now. He never changes, and He's going to keep on moving. I don't care about the naysayers. There's going to be a point in your life that you got to just trust what God says and not worry about what everybody else says. There's going to come a time in your life that you're going to have to go with God or be passed by. I believe right now that's where we're at. Are you willing to go with God? Are you willing to, to, to move forward even when it doesn't look like it's going in the right direction? Even if it wasn't, listen to this, even if it's not turning out like you prayed for. That's a tough thing. See, I, I'm sure that, that those guys were probably praying at their house and their hut. I, I, I'm sure that those guys were, as they were walking, who knows how far they had been coming, they were probably saying, man, Lord, I just was trusting you to, to do it my way. I thought you'd probably do it back there on the path. Oh, well, surely once we got up to the steps, God, God would go ahead and heal him. But that wasn't the case. God knew what was coming, and God did it in his fashion. And over 2,000 years, we're still talking about this. I got some more to unpack, so I hope you guys stay with me to the end. I got some more to unpack. So look at this right here. The next thing I got, I said, it's time for some more. You can type that in there. It's time for more. It's time for more of the great things of God. And I hope right now you're encouraged. I'm down to work my way down to verse 12. And it says, immediately he got up, took the mat, and he went out in front of everyone. As a result, they were all astonished and gave God the glory, saying, we have never seen anything like this I'm going to ask you something does your life represent that now I'm going to say a few things and, and, and don't miss what I'm saying because let me tell you what I'm going to be the first one I want to get real closer I'm the first one that needs Jesus morning noon and night every minute every second of the day but I'm going to tell you what God has done a change in my life for the better and he's not done yet the question is are you willing to let God make a change in your life? Are you willing to, to ask him to come into your life and forgive your sin and make you whole? Because right there, that man in that situation, he could have very well been healed and been lost. He could have very well been healed and on his way to eternity in hell. But see, God's love is so great and, and, and his, his understanding is so vast, he, he went and he dealt with the big issues first. You see what I'm saying? The big issues, are you ready to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? Let's keep on rolling. They were all astonished and they gave glory to God. Again, we go back and we see how God used that in a mighty way. Let me tell you what, this man had some challenges. I have some challenges. You have some challenges. You know what? We have to get used to that. Life's journey is filled with challenges. But my question is, how will we face those challenges? Will you face them alone? 
Will you face them in your own strength? Or will you be re- willing to rely? Listen to this. Are you willing to rely on the power of the Lord, man? I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost is just moving in my heart. Are you willing to, to just say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. It doesn't look good. Lord, I don't know how you're going to fix it, but I'm trusting you. Lord, we're going to the other side. Lord, I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk. I'm going to do what I can do. I'm going to do as much as I can do today to, to move forward in the way that you're pulling me and showing me and guiding me. Lord, I'm going to start out and I'm going to read your word. Lord, I'm going to start out with some prayer. I'm going to tell you what. When we start having a compassionate heart like that, Let me tell you, that's when God is tilling the soil of our heart so that the seed of the gospel could be planted. And when the sun, S-O-N, starts reflecting on us, it's going to grow, baby. It's going to grow. So let's keep on rolling. They had great zeal and passion. Do you have zeal and passion? How do you live your life? So many people that I know live a ho-hum life. My ministry team sometimes tease with me and sometimes I know it's part of the big prayer for me. They go, you live life really loud and you live life really large. Yeah, I do because I got a God. I got a Jesus. I got a Holy Spirit living in me and I can't contain what he's done in me. So I'm going to let it out of me to share it with other people. We need to live with zeal and passion. Regardless of where you're at, whether you're at your house, whether you're at your job, whether you're in the line, whether you're at the doctor's, whether you're at the the funeral home, wherever you're at, I want to encourage you to live with zeal. And when you do, you watch how the blessings of God will follow you. You watch how people will want to know what you know and who you know. See, a guy told me something a long time ago. I share this often, but I needed to hear this. I needed to hear this so bad, and it's so simple. But at this particular time in my life, there was waves crashing, man. There was naysayers. There was this. There was that. It was early on in the ministry. I'm just kind of holding on, trying to see what's going on. And everybody was coming at me from this side and that side and temptations to, to go back into rock and roll business and this and that and all these different things was going on. And a friend of mine told me, I said, man, what's up? What's up, man? And my buddy said, look, nobody, nobody can argue with the changed life. And Jesus changed your life. Somebody say, amen, if God has changed your life, I'm going to tell you what, he's able and he's willing. We're going to get ready to bring it home here. I hope everybody's enjoying this message as much as I am. Because I'm going to tell you what, God is faithful all the time. He is the total package. So I want to bring a few things home here. And, and I want to share something that I, I learned just a little bit. I, I want to tell you all this. The, the folks at the home base, they hear this. When I, when I start on a message, as soon as I say amen Sunday, I'm looking and I'm preaching and I'm pulling and looking and, and spending time with God and, 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 and just running it through the old meat grinder and said, Lord, I want it to be everything you want it to be. Lord, get me out of the way so that people can can see your power and your glory. Hey, I I want them to know about you. And so as I go through this, right up to the last minute, I'm I'm telling you about quarter quarter till 10, I was still looking to take some notes and stuff. I was like, man, I I just want this to be the best it could be. I just want it to be the best it could be so people know about you, Lord. And, and, And what he reminds me is this. It will. You just trust me. Now, when I tell you that, I'm not telling you that I'm trying to do it all on my own. What I'm telling you is I'm trying to do my very best to get out of the way so God can be exalted on the throne. So, so with that, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. I'm going to give you this is factor refresh. I just heard this story when I was just getting ready to, to, to hit the play button. And I want to share this. And, and I thought, wow, what a, a great way to put a bow on this thing. I'm telling you what, what a great way to share this story. So as we go through and we go back and we look at those four men, what can we learn from those four men? We don't know their names. They didn't make it about them. The Bible never says they jumped up and said, hey, wait a minute, we're the guys that took him in. We want a little praise. Never mentions that. Never says that they swung down first and said, hey, look, uh, look, we're here. We got a guy. We're going to bring him in, and so stand back. No, it didn't say that. 
What it shows us is this, that it started with compassion. Write that down. You can put it in the comments, compassion. It started with compassion for someone else. Do you have compassion for someone else? Do you, can ha do you have compassion for those that are lost? Do you have compassion for those that are less fortunate? Maybe those that are going through a difficult time. Maybe those that are addicted. Maybe whatever you can fill in. My question is, do you have compassion? And see, what we see is that compassion got coupled with something else. You can write this down. Commitment. They didn't just have compassion to sit on the sidelines and say, oh, so sorry, Joey can't get up today. No. It moved them. That, that compassion moved to commitment. This is so cool. Then it turned into collaboration. Come on, church. That's for the church right there. It moved them in to collaboration. They had to work together, somebody. They had to work together. We have to work together. I call it spokes in the wheel for Jesus. You keep Jesus in the center, and all those spokes work together to keep the wheel turning, baby. Keep the wheel turning. That's what I'm talking about. We got compassion. We moved to commitment, collaboration. And you know what happened then? Then it built up courage. It took courage to do that, man. It took courage for those guys to go out there, to walk and go and load and pull and keep on going and not be swayed by the crowd and say, hey, we are going to get him in the presence of Jesus. Man, moms that's been praying for their kids for a long time, you keep on praying. You're going to get them in the presence of Jesus. Hey, uh, grandparents, you praying for your grandchildren, keep on pressing in. Husbands, praying for your wives. Wives, praying for, for your husbands, the whole deal. Praying for the people at your job. Hey, keep pressing in. Compassion leads to commitment. Commitment, commitment led to cooperation for the church. I want everybody to hear that for each other. And then look at this. It was courage. It was courage that took them up on that roof. Do you have the courage? Are you living out of your convictions? Will you live the unshakable faith of the Lord Jesus Christ? Let me tell you something. We have to come together to see the total package of God because we are a piece of the puzzle. We're the body of Christ, man. We're the body of Christ. You can't do it on your own. I can't do it on my own. God doesn't call us to do it on our own. He did the hard part. I'm going to close with this. I heard this story this morning, and I pray that I get it right. But I think I can get it close enough for you to, to get some, some really good nuggets out of it. A man was preaching and he told a story about way over in Africa there was a small tribe and, and folks over there didn't have a whole bunch and they had folks that would, would go out and they would hunt and do things and they, would, they had the ability, they were very small people and, and, and they could crawl up in trees and they could do all these things uh, like that but man, they, they really had to, to pull together to do some stuff. And there was one man in this village, he was, he was just, he was like the major hunter guy. And he would go out, and he decided that he was going to get an elephant. Now, no doubt, he's small, and the elephant is towering over him. And he begins to, to, to devise a plan. He says, what I'll do is I'll, I'll dig this hole out, and then I'll, I'll put stuff over it and, and make a trap. Y'all can visualize that. And then he climbed up a tree, and he began making noises and, and luring the elephant over. And the elephant came over and the elephant fell in to the pit. Immediately he says, I caught him, I got him, I'm the great hunter. Look what I did, look what I did. And he goes out and he gets ropes and everything. And he starts to pull and he starts to grab and he starts to do. And he couldn't get him out of the hole. And all of a sudden he goes back, he says, I'll go back and, 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 and get my, my, my whole town involved, the whole village and he goes back and he tells him, he says, I've trapped this big elephant. If we've got this big elephant, it's going to be great. Everything good. And all of a sudden, the women start singing. 
the men start sharpening knives and everything else. And they said, hey, we're going to go back and we are going to be blessed because this is what's going on. We're going to bring that elephant out and it'll be enough to go around for our whole village. They get there and, and the men begin to work together. And they take vines and they take different things and they begin to pull and they begin to pull. And, and right up here, everybody's listening to this. Everybody's saying, it's our elephant. It's our elephant for our village. It's our elephant for our village. But the one man that did the hunting says, no, it's my elephant. No, no, it's, it's, it's my elephant. And they begin to get him right on up here. And, he, and, and right when they could see him, everybody pulling together saying, yes, this is for our, our village. This is for all of us. Turns around and, and he says, no, it's mine. And they drop the elephant back down. And then he rethinks it a little bit and he goes, Okay, okay, let's, let's do it again. Let's do it again. And they go, woo, okay, let's pull him back up. And everybody's pulling together. They have the collaboration. They have the commitment. And as they get him back up again, this guy just couldn't shake it. He says, no, no, no. It's my elephant. I got him. I did it. Right then they know it's going to be a problem. And everybody in the village let go of their ropes and they go back. And he sits there. And he looks, he goes, but it's mine. It's mine. I did this. Look at me. The whole point of the story was this. You can't do it on your own. And it's more than just one man committed. It's the commitment of all. No doubt that, that, that Hunter's heart was very much like the Pharisees. Who, who, who is this? Who is this? What's going on? In the story... Of the four friends, again, we never heard anybody saying, look, look what I did. Look what I did. No, they use it as a platform for God to get the glory. Many times in our life, we might be the one on the front line. But I'm going to tell you what. If your heart ever changes to it's about me instead of about him and others, you're going to find yourself in that hole with the elephant. Let us pray. Father, I pray that today that somehow, some way, you took this message and created a draw in the hearts of, of, of men and women that are listening today and children. And whether they listen to it now or they listen to it later, I pray that, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that they come to the saving knowledge of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, what must we do to be saved? It's clear that we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ through the death, burial, and resurrection. Hey, let me tell you what, just like we saw in the story. Maybe this man was paralyzed physically, but all of us are paralyzed spiritually without Jesus Christ. So today, friends, as I come to you, humbly come to you. I pray that you take a minute and think about where will you spend?